this is one of the subjects that I, it doesn't bother me one bit to cover the same material, even if it's relatively close together, even if it's been, you know, what, 20, well, I mean, it's already been 23, 24 weeks already since we, we went over this particular passage. But, um, I mean, this is, this is extremely important. This is, obviously, Psalm 22 is a, is a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ when he was dying on the cross. I don't think any Christian would, would argue that or deny that or have any other interpretation of Psalm 22 uh, other than Jesus Christ dying on the cross. And because we have such clear, you know, there's a lot of places where you can point to and, and you can see prophecies in Scripture. But this is, just, is blatant because it's referenced, you know, in both places. I mean, exact verses are quoted. Jesus Christ himself saying, you know, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me, which is how Psalm 22 starts off. We're going to start reading in verse number 33 of Matthew 27. We just got done reading the entire chapter of Psalm 22. So kind of keep your eyes open for a few places where you're going to see the similarities between Psalm 22 and Matthew 27 of how they happen. And the, one of the reasons why I'm starting bringing this up is just because this is such awesome evidence to the fact that Jesus Christ was real, that he died, that he rose again from the dead, that he was prophesied. And, and again, I've, I've covered this in sermons in the past, but it's, it's so amazing to me. You know, people act, some people will act, people who want to mock Christianity and mock people who have faith, as if it's just this totally blind faith of just like, like it's unreasonable to believe in a Savior, to believe in God, to believe in the things that we believe in and to believe that the Bible is actually the Word of God and not just a book of men. It, it's, it, it, there's so much to this, and it's people who don't really know it or people who may have heard it and known it but have rejected it that want to make those types of, of accusations or, or have that type of an attitude about this. But this is so truly amazing when you can see Psalm 22, which was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years you know, prior to the birth of Christ and all of the things that would have to fall into place for all of the events that happened in Matthew 27 and, you know, in, in reality, in Jesus' life, when he was crucified, to so perfectly fit the Scripture. And it's not just this Scripture, it's so many, but when you look at this and you consider all the people that have to be involved in these things, I mean, you, man would not be able to so perfectly figure out how to create these writings, you know, being spaced so far apart and having multiple witnesses give an account of these stories and give these Gospels and, and, and have them recorded and spread them abroad, even especially at the time when people are around that have witnessed these events, and have it survive and have the credibility that the Bible has. It is, an, it, it is amazing. I mean, it's the truth, so it's not like you have to worry about it uh, surviving because it is true, but we have multiple witnesses uh, testifying to the events that happened when Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, and they line up so perfectly with Old Testament prophecies. How could it not be the Word of God? And, and when it gets to the point of the specificity that it has, you know, I brought this up in the past, too. You think of, of these, you know, astrologers and, you know, these people that, that are so-called prophets like Nostradamus or, you know, other people that have these prophecies and these visions and stuff. They're always these super vague things. Or if they're specific, like they just don't happen, they don't come to pass. Or it's just like something that you can apply to almost anything. But the Bible's not like that. The prophecies in Scripture are not like that. They get very specific, even to this point here. When we read through Matthew 27, you compare it to Psalm 22, you're just going to be like, this is incredible how specific. I mean, this is, this is just giving you a perfect image of what's going to happen back in Psalm 22, back in the time of King David, you know, in Israel, before Jesus Christ coming here. It's just painting this picture of Jesus Christ being on the cross. 